Hi and welcome to this mini tutorial on how to add uh, pressure sensors in a gazebo simulation. This is an answer to this question made by this user in Gazebo Answers. So for that we're going to use a simulation of this fantastic robot created by React Robotics. So if you're interested in the simulation and also in the physical robot, have a look at this uh, web page because it's worth checking out. Yeah. And all the code will be here, uh, ROS compatible. And also all the code will be in a ROSJECT so that you just have to launch the ROSJECT and plug and play and it will work. Okay, everything's set up. So let's get started. So the first thing is having a look at what we want to accomplish. So if we launch in Dogbot Gazebo package, the main launch, we can see that we have React Robotics uh, robot already running here, the simulation. And most importantly, you can see that it has like four tips in each of the, the foot. And there we have placed the pressure sensor plugins. So if we have a look and we do grep of contact, for example, we see that we have one topic for each of the foot and if we do a ROS topic echo you see that it's publishing all the time all the contacts if it's you see that it alternates between not publishing anything and publishing something because when it's not touching the floor there's no contacts okay and this information is basically if we have a look we see the frame of the foot uh, the contacts which, which object are you contacting with and also the force, the total force and some information about the contact normals and positions. Yeah. So all this information is generated by plugins. So let's have a look. How can we do that? By the way, if you want, if you launch this Rostjack, the only thing that you have to do is uh, go to dogbot tc and if you do it in your local computer you'll have to do the same thing just execute requirements and it will install in your rosject and in your local computer all the requirements needed for this so that it compiles yeah okay so going to the code so let's have a look how do we do this if we go to dogbot description and we see the URDF that we use to spawn this robot, we can see that this one is the one that we are using. Um, there we go. So in the macro for each of the foot, you can see, well, of the legs, you can see that we placed this sensor here, okay, inside the gazebo tag. And bear in mind that in this case, it's inside this macro that corresponds to the leg, okay? So it's the macro of the leg and inside it we have everything here, okay? So, so here we have to add a sensor tag with the corresponding type, which is contact. And in this case, we are using, I used Gazebo Ross Bumper to get mm, the same information of pressure and contact force and so on. And here we have to specify certain things that if you don't do it right, it won't work. The first thing is the contact. Oh, the first thing is saying true, always true. Okay. And then the collision. This is the most critical part that we are going to address just in a minute, just to talk over all the details. The plugin that we're using is Gazebo Ross Bumper. And here we specify the topic, which we are specifying for each leg. We have one topic and the same at the end, contact sensor state. And then the frame, 
the same. We s specify the frame. If you only have one, then you'll specify it directly here because we are using chakros. We are putting these variables, yeah? But it would be the frame of the object of the link that you want to associate this sensor with, yeah? Okay. The most important part is the contact element. And this is not easy because the, the, the intuitive part would be I put here the link and that's it. Well, that doesn't work. You have to state the contact element defined in the SDF that Gazebo will use at the end. All this gibberish means that we have to transform a chakra file into an SDF file, this SDF file. And inside this one, we have to look for the collision element associated with our link. And that's, let me just, so for example, for the back left, Foot. Yeah. If we go here and we look for it, we see that we have five occurrences. One for the sensors. Well, this one's for the sensors, and then this one for the cont, the collision, and this one for the visuals. Okay. So we have to look for these for the collision associated with our back foot. And you see that it's a very complex name that it's generated using the parent, the type of joint, and then the child, and then collision, and then they give a tag here. Yeah. So if, if you're using chakras, this will be generated. And therefore, it's more difficult to know if you just use URDFs, then it will be easier to predict what you the outcome. But this is the best way to know which is the element that you have to put. And to convert a chakra to an SDF, you can use this my tiny script that I generated. That what it does is generate. Uh, it removes everything that you have URDF or SDF, and then. It transforms your chakra to URDF and the URDF to SDF. And from there on, you can get the variable. And yeah, that's quite it. How do, how can you give tactile feedback to a gazebo simulation? So I hope you liked it and give a, give a like if you liked the video and subscribe for more videos like this. Until then, keep learning ROS. Thank you.